So welcome back guys to another video and I am back from out of town and right before I left on my trip from work I made a video saying I want to do uh, a Q&A so I was asking you guys to send in some questions and I had to say you guys sent some great questions. I remember being in a hotel room reading some of the comments and being like this is going to be a really fun video. So without further ado I'm going to go ahead and read some of the questions that you guys sent and answer them. So first one I'm going uh, to do is from Sam Piner. He asked what do you think of the upcoming ukulele game? Now, for some of you guys who don't know about uh, ukulele, it was a Kickstarter project made by the ex-members of Rare. Uh, they pretty much made a spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie, and it looks freaking awesome. I I'm really excited about it. Unfortunately, I didn't have the I didn't have the funds at the time to support the Kickstarter while it was going, but I I'd, I'd really hope that when this game comes out. That it does, uh, you know, release at least like digitally. I would love to get a digital copy on Wii U. I'm, I would love to have physical copies. So, you know, who knows? Maybe by the time it comes out, we'll have some nice physical copies. But either way, I'm really excited. The next question was from Power Level Amy. She asks, "Are you a kid or are you a squid?" That's totally a Splatoon reference. And I would say, right now, I'm a kid. But, when we play Splatoon, I will turn into a squid and take over your turf. I say that now, but if her and I play Splatoon, I know what's going to happen. She's going to beat me and make a whole montage on her YouTube channel. Definitely check it out when it happens. I know it's going to happen. Uh, let's see, the next question was from the Game Grinder. He says, what is your most sought after game currently? Perhaps something that you would cave in and get eventually. But perhaps the cost is too much at this time and you hope to find it in the wild cheaper or just scientifically better deal. Uh, he says, uh, my current is a Valkyrie Profile, excellent game, but it's going up towards $120 currently and though I'm at the point where I'm about to give in and get it, also, what is, uh, when is Excess Gaming Red Light Edition coming out? Um, all right, uh, my, my, the game that I'm always looking for when I'm out in the wild, I would love to find for a good price, is Castlevania Dracula X for the Super Nintendo. That's the one Castlevania I don't have in my collection. Like I have all the US release Castlevanias except for that one. And I've seen it out at the flea markets and stuff like that, but there were mostly people that sell video games, so they knew the price that were selling them for like, uh, like 180 bucks and stuff like that. So. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully, maybe one day uh, I'll go to a flea market and some grandma will have it in a box full of transformers, and I'll I'll have a great day or something. Uh, Excess Gaming Red Light Edition. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm not really sure what he means. When I think of red light, I think of like you know prostitution. Uh, I do know a lot of people really like the. Uh, the boner time bag that that Devin bought me, I did a, a unboxing of. Some people were like, "Man, you should film a reactions video watching these." And I, no, no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Actually, those DVDs are still like sealed. I haven't even touched them. It sounds so bad. Uh, Paul Niner, or the the Ninja. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm hoping I'm not mispronouncing that because when I when I copied this, I didn't get the full username. But he, he, he comments a lot on this show. He says, if you could own one arcade machine, what game would it be? Uh, no MAME, because that's cheating. And if I could sneak in a tiny question, cake or ice cream? That's a good, that's a good question. Because I, I totally would have picked MAME. If you were like, if you could have any arcade, what would it be? I'd be like, oh, I'd love a MAME cabinet. But I, I would have to say probably um, a Donkey Kong cabinet. I love Donkey Kong. That's probably one of my one of my favorite arcades. Either that or like Street Fighter 2 or Mortal Kombat 2 would be awesome. And uh, cake or ice cream? I, I I'm I'm a big fan of cake. I love cake. Uh, nine times out of ten, if I eat cake, then ice cream's like a, an option that goes with it. But out of the two, I really love pie. Can't go wrong with pie. Also, uh, Nerd Bites Weekly. As let us know what you think about Splatoon. I actually got Splatoon yesterday, and what can I say? It's 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 awesome. So much fun. Uh, it's very very addicting. It's very different from Nintendo. You know, like the the third person team based shooter. 
it, it's kind of cool. I, I really, I'm, I really like it. I, I can't wait to play more of it. I also bought the uh, the Squid Girl Amiibo to go with it. Also, Jason, a good friend of mine, he asked, if you could change one thing from the gaming past, what would it be? Also with the future or present time. Uh, in the past, I, I don't really know too much that I would change in the past. You know, I, I kind of like the way gaming was back then. So, uh, I'm, I'm really not sure. Uh, today, though, I, I would definitely... I wish I wish the DLC wasn't such a thing. Uh, I, I don't hate DLC. I think DLC, if it's done right, it can be a really awesome tool. It can help give life to a new game. But, you know, when I think of DLC as well, a lot of it could be like unlockable content to add a replay value to a game. Uh, mainly like the fighting games. You know, uh, back in the day, you get like Tekken, you, you would want to unlock all the characters in single player mode. Now you can just buy them in a DLC. Same with like alternate costumes and stuff, so that kind of sucks. Also, I'm almost gonna make, uh, I was thinking about making a video about this in the future and kind of explain a little bit more about it, but I'm not a huge fan of the HD remasters. Uh, I think some games definitely benefit an HD remaster, especially if it was a, uh, you know, a hidden gem and maybe a whole lot of people didn't play it, but I mean, there's some games that we're getting HD remasters of that I'm just like, Come on, man. Uh, especially, especially since there's more HD remasters of like PS3 and 360 games on Xbox One and PS4 than there are Xbox One and PS4 games. It's kind of ridiculous. I mean, they've they've remade Final Fantasy X twice now. They made it for the PS3, and a year later they came out with it for the PS4. I, <laughs> I'll have to save that for another video. Also, uh, Ralph uh, Paddle. Padawan? I, I don't I think I'm mispronouncing that. It says if you could sell your soul to Satan in exchange for one game, which game would it be? Oh man. Like a whole eternity of damnation for one video game. I I, I really don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't I can't think of any game that would be worth that much pain for eternity. I don't know. Maybe maybe I can work out something. Maybe I can get Dracula X for the Super Nintendo and like pull like a Dante's Inferno and escape hell. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> Danger Jim asks. Uh, he asks two questions. He says, "What, in your opinion, is the most overrated game series?" And two, how often do people tell you look eerily similar to Lee Schreiber? Uh, <laughs> first one, my most overrated game series. Um, it would have to be like Call of Duty. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, there, there's a lot of series. Assassin's Creed. I, I think. I think. I'm, and this is all my opinion. If you guys love these games, then more power to you. But it's just like they come out with these games yearly, and it's it's like people have like the goldfish goldfish syndrome, where where you know the game comes out and they're really really excited about it, and then next year it's it's the same thing, and they're excited about it again, like. It's the same excitement, like they've been waiting like five years for this game, but it, it only took like six months for it to come out. Uh, and and the, your second question, I get it a lot. Um, that's one of the reasons why I when I do when I go to cons and stuff, I'll dress up like uh, Leaf Shriver's saber tooth, and it's a it's a hit. Everyone loves it. And I did that because you know I would have the chops, and just in normal life, I'm like going to get a burger somewhere, and someone's like, do you know who you look like? So, I get it a lot, actually. Um, Andrew asks, What old uh, dead franchise would you like to see come back as a Kickstarter? That's easy. Star Tropics. I would love to see a brand new Star Tropics game. That would just be amazing. I think it's funny that uh, Star Tropics have gotten, it's gotten more popular over the years. A lot of people have been playing it more and talking about it more, but you didn't really hear about it a whole lot back then. Also, Blaster Master would be an awesome Kickstarter if that was in the right hands and that came out. That'd be kind of cool. Okay, and, um, well, I apologize. Yeah, okay, here it is. Carlos L Lima asks, do you think that Mario Party is getting worse with every version? What is your favorite version? I'm not a big Mario Party person. Um, I... The only Mario Party I really have is Mario Party 10, and I just bought it for the Mario Amiibo on like New Egg because it was on sale. Uh, Mario Party is that series that I always play when I'm at someone's house. I, I couldn't really tell you the difference between 
Mario Party 2 or Mario Party 4 or 5 or 6 or something like that. I just remember I rented Mario Party for the GameCube when I first got my GameCube and had a blast. Uh, some of some of the mini games I enjoy more than others, but other than that, I don't really have too much of an opinion on that. Uh, Red Jean asked, Have you ever played Radiant Historia and uh, Dragon Quest VIII, and what do you think of them? I love Dragon Quest VIII. A matter of fact, as you guys can see, I have this slime behind me. I'm a big Dragon Quest fan, and I actually, my PS2, I had gotten it at launch, and it messed up. So I didn't have a PS2, and I went and bought like an Xbox, and later on I got a, a GameCube. But Dragon Quest VIII actually made me go back and rebuy uh, a PS2. I had to play it. It looks looked awesome, and it's a fantastic game. Very lengthy game, too. I mean, there's a lot to it, especially with the whole alchemy pot and stuff like that. Radiant Historia, I had that on the DS. I still haven't played it yet. It was actually a Christmas gift I got like almost two years ago. I still have not played it, but I've heard nothing but good things about it. It's just a matter of fact of trying to get time to play an RPG. I don't have a whole lot of time sometimes. Uh, Psycho6 asks, what is a game or series that gets a lot of praise, but you can't stand? No Call of Duty's or Assassin's Creed cop-outs. <laughs> well, uh, I would have to say like a series I think that gets a lot of praise, that I, I, I'm just kind of like, it's probably like the Infamous series. I, I don't know, I just I can't get into the Infamous series. Also, uh, Mass Effect, I couldn't get into Mass Effect. and. I, do I think they're I don't think they're bad games it's just I don't really see I don't really connect with it I could say you know I know some fan I know some friends of mine are are big fans of infamous especially the the one on the ps4 a lot of people really like that one but I just I couldn't get into it Sam Hain 81 by the way awesome username I love Sam Hain uh, November coming fire is probably one of my favorite albums uh, could you share a memory from your childhood, preferably a Christmas memory, as they give me all the fuzzies inside? You know, I, I, I'm the same way. I love sharing memories, and I get that weird nostalgic feeling as well, so I, I totally know what you mean about that. Uh, but honestly, one of my favorite Christmas memories, of course, you know, I have, I've shared some of them in the past, you know, talking about when I first got my Nintendo and stuff, but... Actually, it was the Christmas right after I was done with high school. It was like 2005. And this Christmas was really cool because uh, my my friend had just gotten a he's he had just gotten a car and we we got to go out and hang out. We went and got donuts and we went to go see Black Christmas in theaters because there was nothing else to do. And I remember a friend of ours had uh, sent us an, a CD of one of our favorite Japanese bands, Balzac. Uh, Balzac had came out with their album Deep Blue, and it hadn't came to the States yet, and somehow he had gotten a leak of it and sent it to us. So I just remember us driving in that neon, uh, you know, cold as hell outside, and eating donuts and going to see Black Christmas, listening to Balzac. That was an awesome Christmas. It wasn't anything that special. It was just the moment... And everything was cool, and I, I really enjoyed it. Bio Phoenix, uh, hi Chris. <laughs> he asks, "Have you ever played any game in the description in the Deception series or Shadow Hearts before?" I haven't. I've heard good things about Shadow Hearts, uh, but I haven't played any of those games yet. But I should check them out. Rob Taylor asks, "What do you think is the most overrated character in Final Fantasy, as well as the most underrated character in Final Fantasy?" You know, when I think of overrated characters in Final Fantasy, I can't help but say like Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, he's he's kind of overrated, but I, I will say I, I love Final Fantasy VII. But one of my one one character I think that doesn't get enough love would be um, Zidane. From Final Fantasy 9 I don't I don't feel like enough people have that love for Final Fantasy 9 Tyler asks what game really disappointed you when it first came out that is easy Vampire Hunter D on the PlayStation 1 what a letdown I I remember when that game came out I was so excited because I'm a huge Vampire Hunter D fan and I was like man this is gonna be awesome this is gonna be like a 3d Castlevania because I didn't have an N64 at the time 
and it was just horrible. It was such a bad game, man. Uh, Jason also asked, he asked another question. He asked, what is your dream console or a, a game or console that you wanted as a kid that you knew your parents wouldn't get because it was too expensive to obtain? Uh, probably the Neo Geo AES. You know, I remember seeing the ads, you know, in magazines of like the hot dog, the hot dog ad be like, oh, be a hot dog and get a, you know, a Neo Geo or whatever. I always wanted that console just because it was the arcade inside your living room. And I, I've always been like this, you know, I've always compared uh, the console home versions to the arcade. Like, you know, I have always wanted to have like an arcade perfect game. Even though I will say, like, I enjoy the NES version of Contra better than the arcade version. But other than that, I've always had that comparison. So I always wanted the Neo Geo. And I still don't have it. I have, like, a Neo Geo X, which is okay. It's all right. Uh, okay. Um, Nicotron01001 asks, Do you believe Nintendo would get out of the hardware business? And if they do, would you rather have them focus on mobile games like Konami or multi-platform? I, you know, it's funny. I don't, I don't see Nintendo getting out of the hardware business. I, I honestly, I would see Sony and Microsoft get out of the hardware business quicker than Nintendo. I, there's just something about it. Nintendo is, is very much, you know, they're, they're kind of set back in, in some ways. And some ways that pisses people off, you know, because people are like, oh, they're they're behind on technology and stuff like that. But they're holding on to it, you know. I don't I don't see them getting out of the hardware business anytime soon. If anything, especially with the Nintendo NX, I see a fusion. I see them combining home console with mobile gaming into one unit, which could be kind of cool, could be kind of bad. I'm I'm really not sure. And again, that's just my prediction. Nothing set in stone. So I don't think I don't think Nintendo is going to do anything like that. And plus, Nintendo, they're like they they are the best chameleons when it comes to businesses. I mean, they've been around for over a hundred years. You know, they start out as a card company, then they start making you know VCRs, love hotels, and toys, and then going into video games. So I, you know, Nintendo has a way of kind of doing their own path but getting it done. I I really commend them for that. And uh, looks like that's the end of the questions. But yeah, guys, I wanted to say thank you very much for all these questions, and I, I really enjoyed answering them. I'll probably do this again later. Uh, you know, I'm thinking that when I get to a certain, you know, um, mile point with subscribers and start getting some new viewers I'll do like Q&A's just to kind of fill them in and get let them get to know me a little bit more and get to know you guys a little bit more and it'd be all great but anyway guys thanks for all the questions I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned for some let's plays I have them coming up right around the corner but anyway guys thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and as always happy gaming